All right, uh, great win, um, featured game. Proud of uh, the way we approached this week and our effort uh, today. A uh, big game because it was this game and uh, dominant win. Um, so uh, I know people are going to ask me about Curtis Rourke. Though he played really well in the first half. He had a he had a stump on a I believe a helmet and the nail kind of came off and. So we'll know more uh, tomorrow, but optimistic. Yeah. And uh, let me say this. Um, Sean Asbury's play was probably the big play in that game. There were a lot of big plays in that game, but that was a real momentum uh, turning play. So I thought our offense line did a great job. Uh, we dropped our first ball of the year at receiver at the end of the game. And uh, the defense got kind of got to a point there where, you know, made it real hard on Nebraska. So good win against a team that's got a good tradition and history that a lot of people thought was a good football team. Zach, up and left and Matt. Um, Kurt, between the bye week, national television, the pregame show, whatever else, I, I imagine this could have been the sort of week where distractions became an issue and yet – you guys at least outwardly played maybe as well as you have all year. Just what does it say about this team that it can sort of face a moment like that and meet it so emphatically? Well, it's a veteran team with the right kind of guys, got a good staff, and it all starts at the top. I'm not going to let them get complacent, and, or the coaches either, you know. And I was a maniac in the fourth quarter of this game, a maniac. Um but we responded. It was a tight game, like I said, and then we broke it open with some key plays. Some of those back shoulder catches got us going, and Curtis, we hit a couple runs, uh, and uh, they couldn't answer the bell in the second. They took it down the field, had a chance really to, you know, make it a game, and, and Asbury made that big play. I think it was fourth and eight when he made that big play. So it says a lot about the character on this football team. We've got a lot of experience on this football team, and... Uh, you know, enjoy it tonight. Uh, but, you know, we're the same guys that we were this morning when we woke up, right? We just kind of overcame another challenge. Hey, Coach, up here. Uh, they came in giving up like 85 yards a game, no rushing touchdowns. You guys go well over 200, five rushing touchdowns. Just talk about the play, the physicality of your line, and then the way your backs, you know, really took advantage of those, those opportunities. Yeah, we got some real blue collar guys up front, coached by a blue collar guy. Coach Bostad's kind of an old school line coach. You know, he really, you know, they put a good day's work in. You know, he'd probably never coach for a guy like me. It gets him off the field like I do. Uh, but, you know, th those guys are really tight and they're tough guys. And uh, those backs we got, you know, they're all about the same. And, uh, they're, you know, they're good players. And then, you know, perimeter blocking is important too. You know, the res explosive plays happen uh, with great downfield blocking. So, With Taven coming in, I mean, you mentioned uh, your kind of assessment of him was that you'd always see wild plays in practice, but consistency might have been the issue. Had he turned a corner kind of in practice the last two months? And what have you seen from him that he was ready for this moment today when he needed to come in? I mean, he's always been the backup quarterback. And uh, I thought he played well his first opportunity at home, the second opportunity at home, okay. This guy still has to practice better, but it's hard to be the second string quarterback because you don't get many reps. And, you know, we put a lot of new stuff in in the past game week to week. And then you look at the variables in terms of their coverages and defenses, right? So, and, um, but I thought he went in there and did a good job. I had confident, team had confidence. And, uh, you know, I was proud of him. Todd and Seth. <coughs> Kurt, uh, Terry Jones and uh, Bryson Bonds both got a chance to uh, play a little bit more than we'd seen them before, and they both played well. What, what was uh, the rationale on, on having them play, and, and how happy were, th were you with their performance? Yes. Yeah. Well, Terry Jones started and played most of the game, and Farrell started at strong safety this week. And Bryson Bonds went in when uh, Sean Esbury started cramping after the interception. So Terry Jones got a lot of reps at Rover today, and we'll see what the tape looks like. Rick. Kurt, you've obviously since the beginning of the season been working to build up the atmosphere in the stadium for games and with you know the second half of the season in mind. Just how much juice did the crowd give you today and what was it like kind of seeing an atmosphere like this today? 
Well, you know, I, I noticed them, and it was great because it was sold out. Michigan sold out. We got to get Washington sold out still. And uh, there's a lot of excitement there, you know, a lot of places, which is awesome. And uh, I could tell they were really loud. Uh, we did have some people leave, which I understand as the game waned on. You know, we had a pretty big lead. And uh, always on uh, Scott and his crew about in-game in entertainment and music selection uh, in the second half. Uh, no. Um, you know, the, um, keep winning, people are going to come. And, uh, you know. I felt confident it could happen here like that too because I had done it at one other place that was very similar to this going in. Rick? Yeah. Third row. Raiola had come into the game, only had three interceptions all year. He had three picks today. What kind of things did you do to, to throw him off and get him unsettled? Well, probably some of the, uh, without, they, they threw the ball a lot more than they had. And uh, then they got behind, they had to throw the ball more. So he's under pressure and then he's in some, tough down and distance situations and maybe he's forcing the ball and he's young. He's a very talented guy, but you know, he's young. And uh, and we made some nice plays out there. Zach front right, then Scott. Coach, I know you guys don't like to look at necessarily the outside noise, but to go and do what you guys did offensively against the team that was ranked as one of the better defenses in the conference coming in, what does that say about your offense? I think this says a lot about our team. Now, I know there was a national perception that Nebraska had a pretty legit defense on a national scale, so that opened their eyes, okay? Um, but I think this is a great team win. Scott, far left and Daniel. Uh, Kurt, your, your offense plays with a real poise and confidence. Is that something that's developed over the season, or is it something that you saw in the weeks of training camp? No, I think with success comes belief, which comes confidence, which comes success, right? That cycle. And I think you saw that really kind of start against Western Illinois, who wasn't a great team, but we played well. Now we went to UCLA, and I think you just have seen it build off every other week. Daniel, in front of Jim. I want to say that Lawton Ellison averaged almost nine and a half a run. Just what do you feel like with the way that they ran helped them play the way that they ultimately ran? Didn't well, they probably had some nice holes, and the box count was probably in our favor, which tells me they were probably overplaying the RPOs. So we were handing the ball off and gaining yards. Jim in front and Jack, last one. Kurt, uh, your team has been the, the team that everyone is overlooking or not believing so far up to now, but it seems like it's about to change and there's going to be a, a bullseye on your back at some point. There has to be. People have to start believing. What do you think this team needs to do to be able to withstand that? You always talk about staying you guys, humble. Yeah, you guys make that stuff up, right? <laughs> All we need to do, look, this is the here and now. This is where my feet are, right? And I have to be focused, locked in, learning, and have a great attitude, rub off on other people positively as a teammate, okay? Because an hour from now is a concept. Tomorrow's a concept. It's all concepts. All there is is the here and now, right? So you want to improve as much as you can on a daily basis to put yourself in the best way of a process. And if there was a better way to handle it, you know what I mean? We'd been doing that a long time ago. <laughs> this is the way, right? And then you go on the field, and the margin for error is like that, right? Like the guy catches the ball for a touchdown, or that much more, the DB would have tipped it away. It's athletics. So we got to put ourselves in the best position, and if you pr prepare properly, anything's possible. Jack Sycamore, right, last one. Yeah, uh, Curtis said after the Northwestern game that he wanted to get off to a better start, and I think you guys scored four, touch four touchdowns on the first five drives. Um, I guess before he left with an injury, what do you think allowed him to be successful against the Nebraska defense? And I set, thought he you know, played he really well, made plays, uh, ran a little bit too, and uh, – the wideouts made some catches. I mean, those were, he threw some nice balls on those back shoulders, and those wideouts made some real nice catches. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank Go you. Ahead. All right, guys, have a good one.